This is the story of the greatest cover-up in history. Its masterminds are our church leaders. Its target is the American people. And its purpose is to conceal a dark and deadly secret. Because, according to the final chapters of the Bible, Obama will not finish his second term. He is the 44th and last President of the United States. And our country and every American citizen are about to face its greatest tribulation. From an enemy crueler and more powerful than ISIS, Al-Qaeda, North Korea, and Iran combined. The church will not say a word of this because it will cause panic and despair among all faithful followers of the word of our Lord. This ancient prophecy is encrypted within the visions of four men, chosen to give a very precise and terrible warning to all true Christians and patriots. Therefore, before going any further, I must warn you, what you are about to see is deeply disturbing because you are about to see how all the world leaders, their armies, and even financial institutions are silently playing their part in the lead up to the greatest and darkest event in human history. Most importantly, you will see the exact reason why this prophecy will come true before the 1st of January, 2017. But first, you need to know just who I am for making such shocking statements. My name is Alexander Kane. I am a theology professor working at one of the largest universities in Arkansas. I earned a doctorate degree in theology and ancient history, and I have spent 19 years of my life studying the ancient scriptures, trying to solve one of the greatest mysteries of the Bible. And it all started with one simple question. How come America, the world's only superpower, the greatest evangelical nation on earth, is not even mentioned in the Bible? After all, as we know, the Bible accurately predicts so many other historical events. The two world wars, men reaching outer space, the rise and fall of communism, and the return of the Jews to their homeland after centuries of exile. This question haunted me until one day, by chance, I made a startling discovery that connected all the hidden clues. Because the church teaches us that among all the other historical accounts, the Bible tells the story of ancient Babylon through the words of John the Apostle in the book of Revelation and through the writings of the prophets Jeremiah and Isaiah. According to the prophets, Babylon reigneth over the kings of the earth. It was a queen among nations, and the lady of kingdoms. It was called the hammer of the whole earth, and it became a center of trade, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. It was the praise of the entire earth, and an astonishment among the nations. And according to the church, all this happened a long time ago to the ancestors of current-day Iraq. But if this is true, why do the prophets speak of pollution, since there was no pollution in ancient times? Because thou hast destroyed thy land, I have polluted mine inheritance, and given them into thine hand. Babylon will reach space as it mounts up to heaven, and raises its throne above the stars of God. How could an ancient nation reach space when flight was only discovered in the 20th century? Thou art weaned in the multitude of thy councils. How could Babylon be a democracy weighed down by its huge government when we all know the state of Iraq has never had a real democracy? Babylon is a coastal nation with deep water ports and many rivers. Most of Iraq is a desert and has very limited access to the sea. O oh, that thou dwellest upon many waters, abundant in treasures. The country that can fulfill all these descriptions is obviously not ancient Iraq. The only nation that reached space has become the world's only superpower, is a democracy with a huge government, a mighty military, pollutes its land and sits on waters abundant in treasures, is the United States of America in present times. But what else do the prophets say about it? Its beginning was unique and awe-inspiring. The U.S. was the first state to break away from the British Empire. America was created out of the former British colonies, a nation made out of many states just like the prophets foretold. We speak the English language and we are the descendants of the first British colonies. That is why the prophet Jeremiah describes England like a mother to the U.S. 
In verse 50, 12, according to the prophets, the mother of Babylon has the symbol of the lion. The royal symbol of England is a lion. Even the name Babylon or Mystery Babylon is deeply symbolic. Ancient Babylon was a city made great by people who came from all parts of the ancient world. Just like immigrants helped make the United States the world's only superpower. And because the prophets didn't know of the existence of the North American continent at the time of the visions, they called it Mystery Babylon. Babylon is also called Daughter of Chaldea. This is another clue based on the geography and the history of the United States. Chaldea is an area located in the Middle East that was inhabited by Semitic tribes during the time of the prophets. Today, the people of Israel are the most powerful descendants of the family of Semitic tribes, and the U.S. is home to the largest population of Jewish people, just like the prophets foretold. The fact that Jewish people helped the U.S. become the world's only superpower is not secret. 48% of American billionaires are Jewish and have made their wealth in the U.S. contributing to its rise as the world's only superpower. Therefore, the daughter of the Chaldeans is in fact the United States. This is again very, very precise. What about the personification of Babylon in the scriptures as a woman? This clue is one of the most obvious. The scripture says this woman sits atop water, has a golden cup in her right hand, and a crown of seven rays on her head. And the woman which thou sawest in the great city, which reigneth over the kings of the earth. The United Nations, in theory, reigns over all the kings of the earth and is situated in New York, the great city where you can see the Statue of Liberty, which is the most well-known landmark in the U.S. and the symbol of Babylon the prophets are referring to. So why then are they also calling it the Whore of Babylon? The key to this clue lies in ancient Roman mythology. Libertas in Latin, Liberty in English, is the name of the ancient Roman goddess of personal freedom, especially in sexual matters. She was referred to as the mother of harlots by the famous Roman historian and senator Cicero, and she is considered the matron goddess of prostitution. This means that the Statue of Liberty is actually a statue of a pagan goddess of sexual freedom and prostitution. Therefore, it's no coincidence that the U.S. provides 65% of pornographic movies and adult entertainment to the world and is the country where sexual liberation originated from. It's just like the Bible said, Thou art given to pleasures, for all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. It was written that at the end times, Babylon turns upon its heritage and destroys all the principles that made this country great. Because ye were glad, because ye rejoiced, O ye destroyers of thy heritage, because ye are grown fat as the heifer at grass. Our recent administrations have greatly expanded in size. Ye are grown fat, and have instated laws that limit our constitutional freedoms and destroy the capital bases that made this country great. Just think of the Patriot Act, food stamps, and other entitlements going on undeclared wars, civil forfeiture, and the list goes on and on. The prophets warn of many other sins of Babylon, for her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by the sorceries were all nations deceived. Stand now with thy enchantments and with the multitude of thy sorceries. If so be, thou shalt be able to profit. If so be, thou mayest prevail. This clue is also straightforward. Babylon's merchants become great by deceiving all the nations of the earth. Their prophets made them prevail. Incredibly, Babylon's greatest sorcery is the US dollar. The dollar became the world's reserve currency and lifeblood of all international trade after World War II because it was backed by the biggest gold reserves on earth. That all changed in 1971 when Nixon took us off the gold standard, the greatest monetary sorcery ever accomplished. And the nations went along and used the dollar for trade, while we kept on printing money until, as some economists like Peter Schiff put it today, the dollar is not worth the paper it's printed on. 
Because of this, the U.S. could buy and sell the nations of the world, who were all deceived. They give up their wealth and resources for something the Federal Reserve literally creates out of thin air. And so our merchants became the great men of Earth, using financial sorceries like bailouts, stock and bond bubbles, quantitative easing, and our national debt that tops $18 trillion. This is why the prophet Isaiah accurately see as fed financial and investment brokers and stock market specialists as astrologers, the stargazers and monthly prognosticators, the sorcerers of Babylon, and in her was found the blood of prophets, and of saints, and of all that were slain upon the earth. The U.S. today is the largest exporter of weapons in the entire world. Babylon sells tools that fuel worldwide bloodshed, and it wages wars covertly or openly seeding destruction on the entire planet. All her wealth and power made the U.S. proud and arrogant exactly as the prophets foretold how much she hath glorified herself, and lived deliciously. For she saint in her heart, I sit a queen, and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. You have trusted in your wickedness, and have said no one sees me. Your wisdom and knowledge misled you when you say to yourself, I am, and there is none beside me. That is what we call today American exceptionalism. The U.S. fulfills each ancient prophecy of Babylon to the letter, the superpower that has abandoned its sound foundations and turned to sorcery and sin. Do not be deceived, God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, this he will also reap. Babylon's pride, greed, and wrath will lead to the greatest event in human history, war with the great enemy of Babylon, exactly as the prophets foretold. They come from a far country, from the end of heaven, even the Lord and the weapons of his indignation, to destroy the whole land. For out of the north there cometh up a nation against her, which shall make her land desolate. Go north through the end of heaven, the Arctic Pole, and you see Russia, the great enemy of Babylon, the one that according to the Bible will destroy it. This clue is as chilling as the Arctic wind, as it geographically pinpoints the two countries capable of starting World War III. The prophets foretell that, and at the start of this war, Russia will unexpectedly use a very special weapon, the weapon of indignation, against the whole territory of the U.S., a weapon like which the world has never seen. The main question you should ask now is, when will World War III happen, and what exactly is the weapon of indignation? The clues to when this event will happen come from the prophet Daniel. In chapter 11, verse 40, Daniel tells of the two kings who are destined to fight the greatest war in human history at the end times. He calls these two leaders the king of the north and the king of the south. The key to understanding this clue is the fact that in ancient times the birthplace was very important, and this is why Daniel identifies both kings by their birthplace relative to Jerusalem, the place where he had his visions. Vladimir Putin was born in St. Petersburg, Russia, which lies to the north of Jerusalem. Does Putin fulfill the other Bible prophecies about him? And the king shall do according to his will. Putin has absolute power. He controls the media, the military, and the economy of Russia. Neither shall he regard the gods of his fathers, nor regard any god, for he shall magnify himself above all. It is very important to note that gods is not written with a capital letter, because the gods of the fathers Daniel is talking about are the rulers of communist Russia, Lenin, Marx, and Stalin. These and other communist gods reigned over Russia for 80 years. They were practically worshipped, and pictures and statues of them were everywhere. But, as prophecy foretold, Putin distanced himself from communism and blamed these leaders for their sins against Russia and the Russian people. He shall magnify himself above all. Russian media portrays Putin as a brilliant politician and diplomat, a huntsman and judo expert, above the former communist leaders in every way. But in his estate shall he honor the god of forces. 
During his term, Putin has greatly increased Russian military spending. This is his way of honoring the God of forces. Therefore, Vladimir Putin fulfills all Bible prophecies regarding the King of the North. The remaining question is whether Barack Obama is the King of the South. He was born either in Hawaii or Kenya, depending on who you want to believe, both of which, relative to the equator, are to the south of Jerusalem. And in those times there shall many stand up against the King of the South. The Obama administration has managed to antagonize a lot of countries. Russia, China, North Korea, a big part of the Muslim world, including Syria, Egypt, Iraq, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Yemen, and the list goes on and on. Unfortunately, it is clear that Barack Obama and Vladimir Putin are the kings of prophecy. This means that their war must start before they leave office, and that is January 2017. The end of Babylon is very, very near, and whether or not they know it, both leaders are on track to fulfill their destiny according to scripture. Because, as Daniel foretold, and at the time of the end, shall the king of the south push at him. The rush to conflict with Russia over Ukraine is not ordinary geopolitics. It's Obama fulfilling his role according to the Bible. In 2014, CIA backed and funded regime change against the pro-Russian leadership in Ukraine. Because of this, Russia is now in an undeclared war with its eastern neighbor. And just recently, U.S. Army instructors, Humvees, and drones have started arriving in the Ukraine. Russia has warned that arming the Ukrainians could escalate into a real war. Furthermore, when Putin annexed Crimea, the Western powers led by Obama imposed wave after wave of drastic economic sanctions on Russian banking and energy sectors key parts of Russian economy. Alarmingly, economic sanctions have preceded every U.S. war in the 21st century. Russian finances were targeted when the U.S. signed a secret deal with Saudi Arabia to collapse the price of oil from $100 to close to $50 in order to cripple the Russian economy. Russia is dependent on oil exports as 40% of its budget comes from it. That is why the Russian currency, the ruble, lost 50% of its value since August 2014. Russian citizens can now only buy half the stuff they used to afford. As the country goes bankrupt, Putin will have the perfect excuse to fulfill his role according to the Holy Bible. Just like a wild animal cornered and threatened, Russia will attack suddenly and without warning. These are the last months, maybe weeks, before the Russian attack that destroys Mystery Babylon, Obama's America. The Bible warns us about the Russian attack using the weapon of indignation, and how Babylon will feel the fury of this terrible weapon unlike anything the world has ever seen before. This weapon will hit our entire country and all our defenses will be in vain. Though Babylon should mount up to heaven, and though she should fortify the height of her strength, yet the spoilers come unto her. This weapon leaves the military helpless because of equipment malfunction. How is the hammer of the whole earth cut asunder and broken? The mighty men of Babylon have forborne to fight. Their might hath failed. The broad walls of Babylon shall be utterly broken, and her high gates shall be burned with fire. She hath given her hand. Her foundations are fallen, her walls are thrown down. Because the spoiler is come upon her, even upon Babylon, and her mighty men are taken, every one of their bows is broken. And this weapon leaves Babylon silent and in darkness. Sit thou silent, and get thee into darkness, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no more be called the Lady of Kingdoms. There is only one weapon capable of paralyzing the U.S. military's equipment and leaving an entire continent in total darkness and painful silence. Vladimir Putin's weapon of indignation is an electromagnetic pulse. One single weapon will cause the fall of Babylon America. 
An EMP, or electromagnetic pulse, is an electromagnetic discharge that fries sensitive circuits in seconds. Military command and control, as well as most of the high-tech equipment, is very vulnerable to an EMP. One blast will reduce our army to fighting using weapons that existed before the 1900s, and it's irreversible. Our entire lives are built around the use of electricity. We use home appliances, drive around in cars with electric circuits. We warm ourselves and feed ourselves thanks to electricity. It's what keeps our society together and our loved ones safe and secure. All of this will be gone in the blink of an eye after an EMP. This weapon fulfills Bible prophecy to the letter. It's swift, has a huge area of effect, and knocks out our military, breaks the hammer of the earth, and help will not come anytime soon. And the kings of the earth lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, Babylon has fallen. In one hour is thy judgment come. And all it takes is not 100, not even 50, but just one warhead to be detonated above the US, and the effects would be irreversible. And Russia has over 8,500 warheads, most of them aimed at the US. As the prophets predicted, the fall of Babylon America will be caused by an EMP device strategically detonated at an altitude of 20 miles above the surface of our country that will permanently cripple our power grid and plunge America into silence and darkness. The attack can happen at any time, without any signs or warning, and the biblical king of the north, Vladimir Putin, is training his soldiers for the coming attack. Since Putin came to power, the number of nuclear drill exercises targeting the U.S. skyrocketed. The King of the North is preparing to fulfill his role according to the Holy Book. The effects of the EMP will destroy America as we know it. Looters, famine, disease, and death. Babylon America will fall, exactly as the scriptures predicted. Therefore, shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning, and famine, and she shall be burned with fire.